talks about feminism or some economic thing or some political thing or anything else, you want to talk about crayons or something, you think it's something interesting, let us know. We'll sign you up, give you a link, and you can just come in and talk about whatever, and we will have a discussion about it. It can't just always be me and some of the other ones. Yeah. Josh and Ryan. Um, basic income. I, yeah, I just wanted to but if it would ask if you would be interested in doing something on what we were just talking about. Because I want us to talk about that. Yeah, feminism in general. No. Absolutely no. There's a feminist we want to get just to get them to talk, but like not. I want to like I want to skew I just want to ask us to have a discussion. They can talk about some of easier. Okay, so feminism next week? Sounds good. We know if we're going to do feminism, can we I, I can bring in the feminism group on campus? We should. We should. They're yeah, actually yeah, there. Not the lab. Use the word that. Huh? All right. Well, I tried to have a Facebook group. I posted something. This thing's still alive because we didn't have any posts on this. No, she's not there anymore. She said she's going to send an email. I was like, I'll call you over. You're the one. Talk to me later. Okay. I heard some stuff. Yeah, this whole thing was. How about instead of patriarchy, you can say male dominated culture? It's the carrier. Yeah, it's like a conspiracy. It sounds like a conspiracy. It sounds like a conspiracy. Moving on to the topic of hands, which I believe actually segues into the reason you're actually here. Dun, dun, dun. It's terrible. Dun, dun, dun. Dude, this is going to roll like utter crap on the recording. Absolutely. Which is why I'm going to have lights off for like 30 seconds.
why do we fear the name? Do we fear we were rational or useful? Why do we specifically fear what we don't know and cannot know? And is reason alone enough to divest us of our behaviors? It's been discussed in previous weeks that when we receive one of these calls, we say our name. If you want to say your name, you can. If not, not. One thing also might be interesting to say what you are afraid of. You don't have to do that if you don't want, but I will start saying, I'm afraid of these cockroaches and vertebrae.
there's a strong aversion. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm also Brian. My fear is probably a little bit of people, but I'm really scared of other drivers. Because I, I understand that people drive, I drive when I'm tired, and other people drive when they're tired, but they're not focused. And that's like one of those things where you don't really think about it uh, that much, but like, it's one of those things where it's like, uh, I really look forward to people driving us everywhere in our cars. I want a poker table in my car, so because you don't have to look at the road anymore. That I look forward to that. And yeah, we live in Atlanta. That's pretty much status quo. We, you have to actively try not to think about other people. <laughs> yeah, especially not be afraid of them. Especially, yeah, especially in cities when people are like, "Oh yeah, I'm going to cut off, I'm going to merge No, thank you. Or you look over and then you're driving like this. Yeah, yeah, that. That, uh, that terrifies me also. So. You guys don't know shit. At least here they follow the most traffic rules in Columbia. <laughs> you have to assume that it's sort of like, well, like the stop signs don't mean shit. You gotta stop like at, at any intersection. Because even if there's a stop sign, like people will just like ski through it. Yes, yeah, I agree. Especially terrifying. Yeah, I, have, I have friends from India who tell me some of the most amazing stories of traffic there. I heard a story once that a man who was in Egypt in a taxi cab and they came to a red light and the taxi driver honked the horn and sped on through and the guy was like, uh, you realize you just ran a red light, right? It's like he said, oh yes, I honked the horn so it turned to green. <laughs> yes. All right. It's both scary and ignorant. Someone like the ball. Oh, that why I love the balls. Hey guys, I'm Dad. Right. So that, that's, that, yeah, I kind of take that 
that is in my head sometimes. And well, when we talk about fear, that's in my head, what I think about that. But like, so I'm just bringing that up to be like, just bring bring the fears a level above like, oh, I'm also afraid of heights, you know, like, but also like to death and things beyond death, not afterwise. Well, maybe I'm But anyway, um, I, I think it might have more so. Can I ask about this? Because um, I actually don't have that fear because once everyone I know or anyone I ever cared about is around, I don't under, I like, and I'm not around either, so I just wouldn't, it doesn't, I don't care personally. So I want to know what, like, I don't, like, I, I don't really understand, I under, like, 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 I, so I, I just don't really understand that, so. Yeah, yeah. I, I, a lot of you guys are agreeing, so you guys can. So, so, so I, I get, I get that too. I'm not, I, I don't have that fear. I think I used to, to a degree, and I still see it as it could be a motivator for me to act in certain ways for recognition. But then, but more recently, I've kind of changed to where it's like, you know, once I'm gone, I won't care any. I won't be around to care any longer about whether someone remembers me or not. Um, so all I want is to leave a positive impact on this world when I leave it for the next people. I'm not even afraid that I might not. Um, but so uh, uh, it occurred to me I have another fear, and that's public speaking. <laughs> including what I'm doing here right now. So this is, oh, this is, this is me overcoming my fear. Um, so I think we can, we can be motivated by our fears in a good way. And, but some fears may just not be useful at all. So for instance, a fear of public speaking doesn't, I don't see a way that it can possibly help me. I just get like a surge of adrenaline, my voice gets shaky. And there's it's not going to kill you, right? Yeah. While fear of heights, maybe that is a little a more. A fear of bears will mean if you see a bear, you're probably not going to stick around. That could be a healthy motivation. So, meanwhile, a fear of the number 13 yeah. is just completely irrational. And I can't, I can't see a reason. Why that? Why anyone would have that, other than like maybe just like a glitch in you know, our programming sorts. I just wanted to say real quick that uh, I'll pass this along. But uh, yeah, like the, to answer to answer your question, of, like I mean, it's it's it's, a, it's kind of a selfish motivation thing. Where it's like I want to be remembered for something. I want to not be completely faded from existence and stuff like that. So it's this selfish oh. thing. I mean, I also want to have like positive impacts in the world. Yeah. No, I understand. Like, I understand that. I just like everyone was saying, yeah. I felt like everyone was like comparing, so I just thought I was missing something. I don't know about that. I kind of like, I had that at one point, and then eventually, um, I just kind of, I came to the realization it was kind of being lumped in. It was more the fear of death, and it was like trying to like, cling on to like some second tier kind of life where either it's your name or what you did. So I'm not eventually just. I can, I can only hope that I can overcome my fear of death before I actually die. That's, that that would, would be really nice. I found that you know, usually you grow out of fears. I've actually grown into the fear of death. Like, um, <laughs> in, in, the, in the past, you know, when well, neighbors are all immortal. Right. <laughs> no, but, but at the beginning, I, I, had, I think, like, when I was very young, I had, like, like, oh shit, I'm gonna die at like very sad. But I, I very quickly uh, got with that too. That, you know, everyone dies, it's a natural thing, there's no reason to fear it. But as, you know, uh, like the science news started to come out and the possibility of eternal life in this and next generation, I suddenly became very nervous about it because there's a chance we'll either be the last generation to die for sure or the first generation to live forever. So, so now I'm going to have because now I'm missing a little bit. If I have a choice, I really do not want to die. So, I'm going to. So, question. Do you, uh, do you pay the $600 a year then? For, for uh, I can't think of the name of the company, but right? Cryonics, I think is what it is, right? Oh, the frozen head. Yeah, well, if you, if 
you're interested in that, you're interested in the option, right? You cry to X. I mean, if it, if yeah, it's six hundred dollars a year, and you're gonna have to get like a white. Like, it's superstitious nonsense. If if I get to like sixty and there's no like physical life extension in the near future, then I'll I guess I'll start investing in the It's not. I'm sure there's options where you don't have to start paying like very much, like you just pay more. What do you want to do when you still young? Well, I mean, they would have reached out to that. Yeah. 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 Y
Does anybody want this red sphere? Does anybody want to get that? Okay. 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 This gentleman has an important series of sacrifices. We have a million slides. No, it's just because most people choose what you have to do for a thousand years. Yeah, they're bored. This is what they call Back to the topic. Yes. Um, what well, is for, I guess, is, I don't know, I don't really disagree with the video. I haven't really thought about that scene. So, but can fear be overcome with reason alone? No. It's an emotional response. You can't necessarily combat strong emotional things with reason. So, so I just, uh, yeah. I would, I would just say that you can't necessarily overcome the fear, but you can change how you can act based on. Well, what is what does overcome well, that's, mean? That's I think it's important to realize that, that you can't use you reason to totally occlude your uh, brain functions. Can't can't be done. I think overcome means you know. Uh, say, I'm afraid to do this. Yeah, I'm going to do it anyway. It's to move past the restrictions that you're taking when you hear well, in that case, you're In that case, reason alone isn't that. I mean, you know, peer pressure is part of it. Just uh, impulsivity works pretty well. I'm afraid to, you know, I'm afraid to go, uh, I don't know, some, name a thing to do on Jackass. I don't know. Hit yeah, your foot in the face with a giant hand with a walk around the corner. There you go. Light your testicles on fire. Now I'm afraid to light my face on fire. The world is watching, so I better do it. I stand to make the light. They put like a mouse on Okay, so, so really, yeah, I think we can overcome fear, fear of these involved, I suppose. I mean, I used to be really afraid of the dark, especially when I really did those. Even when I stopped leaving, I mean, it still took a while. I said to maybe I still would have done. But I just, just faced the door, and I kept the light off. I went outside, walked into it. No matter how scared I was, it just kept going. And now I was going to bother me at all. That's what's really scary for me in which case. There's another thing. I, I can still get scared by a scary movie, even though I've done so. Maybe that means I still believe. Who knows? Uh, but it's, I, I'm afraid of insects, I suppose. Uh, although, Really, it's just the initial reaction. I see one, I get terrified. Then I calm down and I reason that. But my initial reaction will be one that is very loud. And I may knock a few things over. I can kill it. I'll put it outside or something. So I think that is a very bad fear. Therefore, yeah. I'm going to ride over on So, you know, yeah, go ahead. Just like, in terms of, but I think fear is definitely a Can you 
just sit there and logic your way through logic it. Your way through it. So no. not be afraid of but it. if you can logic your way through, you know, your aversion to it, like you're wanting to avoid it, force yourself to expose yourself to it enough, you, I think in almost every case you can get over it. Oh wait, here's here's my response. I think okay, I think the answer that we should be hitting is some fears you can and some fears you can't possibly. Right. So how about this for example? The fear of hell. There is no way to like experience the non-existence of hell except for to logically deduce that it doesn't exist. I maybe? I'm not sure. Like, I mean, I feel like if, if you're if you are an atheist and you come to realize that hell is not real, but you're still scared of that possibility, the only way to get over that is to logic your way through it and say, okay, Pascal Fager is nonsense, like this is that God's a dick anyway. Like there's a lot of ways you can kind of go through it, I think. But that's only logicing your way through it. Now I also I feel like maybe there are people who really can't do that. And that's you know that's okay. And that sucks. But I feel like that's also possible. So using that approach. Go ahead go. But um using that approach, one of the things I think you can't get your way out of is death. At least at this point in time, you don't have a way to conceptualize. Like, I feel like that fear is very hard to overcome. Just like trying to conceptualize non-existence, act having had existence, I feel like. Especially, it's a lot of the fear of the unknown, but like that one is not like. Isn't it? Like, when you, if you die and there's nothing else, then there's nothing to think about. You're just dead. Well, what if there's like, that's it? But like. Well then, some people are getting into religious stuff that's completely different. Which we, I thought we were talking about. Like, what if you know you're about to die in the next five? Well, to be fair, well, the fear of hell is like the biggest. Huh? The fear of hell is one of the like biggest fears. Yeah, I don't think it has. We won't be afraid of it. Yeah, but like when you die, there's like you just sorry. Uh, when you die, there's just nothing else that's happening. You're, there's like dying would hurt. But no, when you die. die. So when you think of, when you think about death, you don't find it comfortable at all. Just like having like if, if I was going to think about death right now, what would it be like? You would just be like, yeah. Like, like, no, 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 sure. Like if so, like if I was dead. Yeah, no, but like this, is, you're living. It's like obviously when you're dead, you're dead. That's what I'm thinking. Like I don't, I don't want to die. Now. Yeah, like yeah, and death. Like, but being dead. Yeah, once you're dead, it's not. Once you're dead, it's so easy. Yeah, but well, absolutely, I don't want to die. So I, like, sorry, I actually confuse us to fear of death, or fear of dying and fear of death. Like, dying would be bad. I don't want to die at all. But death itself is not. No, so, there, there are other people who are afraid of death, of being dead, not just dying. Is it because, um, yeah, I fear dying, but I also fear death itself. It's a not existing that like I fear the most. Because I like existing. So even though while I don't exist, I can't fear it or experience it at all. I, I fear more that ceasing to be than all the pain I could go through in any form of death. I feel like fear of dying is the fear that at one point you will after you die, but there will be nothing else. But being dead is nothing. I don't know. It's like semantics at this point. Okay. Christopher Hitchens. But we're all on the same page. I'm like, yeah. I'm pretty being sure dead. there's a difference between dying and being dead. Dying is scary. Being dead, I was basically that for billions of years before I was alive. Who cares? And it's stuck. I didn't have fun at all. Yeah. Well, you know it. <laughs> all that stuff no. is awesome is right now. Like, it, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't well, fear dying if you knew that there's Yes, you would, because it's different. No, but if you could, like, people would say that, that's not true at all. You mean less, right? No. <laughs> it's just, it's completely different. I, I, like, okay, the way, like, you're with your people, everything, you like the way things are going. Like, what do you do any, like, what do you move? But it's better than the alternative. Dude, she doesn't, she doesn't say, like, when you move, like, when you move for a better job, you don't get afraid at all, because it's going to be better. It's not true. No, but it's okay. So the underlying logic there is existence is strictly better than non-existence. Okay, so like I I, I see your points, but I people who make that argument all the time for religious people, I think that argument is ridiculous. 
Like it's a bad argument, it's not true, and like it's like it, it comes from a which argument is this? I, I said I said existence is strictly better than that. No, that's not you know I didn't the argument I was talking about. People don't fear death, which is not true. Yeah, that 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 argument. No, so, okay. I mean, you can logically you can think of like okay, it shouldn't make sense, but but in reality, in practicality, yeah. yes. Existence isn't better than non-existence all the time. I mean, what if what if post immortality? What if we developed the drug for immortality and then still decided suicide was wrong and then we kept you alive forever in the cell so you can well, That was interesting in, in, in a lot of MRI studies. Yeah. 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 People who yeah. 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 kill themselves and as much as the MRI we can are terminally ill and from a rational standpoint would want to kill themselves because the alternative is living for a few extra months of terrible suffering. Is, is, is anyone in this room, look, big ball, is anyone adamantly opposed to suicide? I mean, you should... In all circumstances, you mean? Yeah. Is, 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 is anyone willing to say you should never kill yourself? I think it's irrational because it's a man that you should, you shouldn't be able to do it. Are you mad? Um, I, I don't think I ever kill myself. I can see myself going on forever. But I, I can't speak for myself in five years. I would, I, I'm interested to hear why it's irrational. Okay, can I also, um, can we also put down, like, saying if somebody were to kill themselves, like, were to kill themselves, like, you should think it's a fine thing and they have the right to do it in, like, a regular, a normal scenario? Because I think we're all thinking, like, oh, terminally ill, obviously that's fine. I think it's not, not like, like, well, I mean, like, but as you move more and more towards different situations, yeah. so like, like, I, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. So, that's that's like the, person, the most specific possible thing. Yeah, that like, like, as as yeah, like, broad, in the most broad, saying no one should ever kill themselves. No, yeah. but like, most, so like, from yeah. is it generally the vast majority of people? I think all, all you were saying was that uh, it is possible that suicide can be. That was, that was the entirety of what you were going to do. Okay, so that's way back to when is death scary is not dying from death itself, that's scary. I, mean, I think, in my opinion, I mean, it is sort of scary, but I find it much more frightening than I thought of that. Uh, well, like, my biggest fear probably is losing someone I don't care about. Like, yeah. like, since I became an atheist, I don't think anybody really, really cared about this guy. Since then, since the last person died was my grandmother, I was still a Christian, and I'm kind of worried about how I'm going to feel. So yeah, that's when my family dies. And when I think of someone like when my sister's dying, I mean, I, I'm much more afraid, not just because I lose them, but the fact knowing they lost, it. they have experienced the same thing I would. But man, it scares me much more to know that they are experiencing what I will eventually face than the thought of me having to face it. I don't know that really means much. To me, it's not that it's not that bad. Knowing that somebody I care about has to experience it much worse. These be the last thoughts before. I think that fear is going to be amplified if we are the let the first generation to live forever, because it'll, it'll be very tragic. We'll be the first ones to have to see our parents, our grandparents die, but then everyone after have the option of eternal life. It'll be the tragic. Can you create your bread? How is this weird kind of model? Because some really, really cool people do tend to at a certain point in their lives just sort of when they get less afraid of it. Or at least just when they get much more, they stop people time to just lose fear of that as they get older. Well, that being said, though, is it because they see it as inevitable? So, like, if he was, like, in this situation, and I'm not going to tell you about this, in this situation, he's saying, well, it's not inevitable. So like, I don't know, if you were an old person, you were told in the next six years, like you're 80 years old in the next six years, you'll have the option to live forever, you get help. Like, as a 20 year old, yeah, you would like, like freak out.
also know that people have been complaining about that since the ancient Greek times. Stupid marrying stupid isn't new. It's it's like it's the norm. Yeah, that's the problem. Rationally, I know that people as a whole are getting smarter on average, but I still have the fear that it's the opposite. Do you fear for the embrace? Exactly. That will destroy ourselves in some stupid way. Was it declared anarchy? Okay, thanks for the